हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द इम्पॉर्टेंट कनेक्शंस ऑफ द हाइपोथेलेमस एंड इट्स फंक्शंस नाउ वेन एवर वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द कनेक्शंस ऑफ हाइपोथेलेमस वी हैव टू कीप इन माइंड दैट देर आर टू सेट्स ऑफ द कनेक्शंस वन सेट इज नोन एज connections with the help of nerve fibers these are the neural connections and non neural connections now when we'll talk about the non neural connections we are talking about the vascular system what does it means that you have to keep this thing in mind that our hypothalamus is having receptors for different change in the circulatory system like osmotic receptor or osmo receptors we have the receptors which are sense the change in the temperature of the vascular system and hormonal levels so these are the senses those are reaching to the hypothalamus with the help of vascular system and these are known as non neural type of the connections now when we'll see the neural type of the connections in this you are having the most common connection with limbic system now as you have to remember one thing that limbic system work with hypothalamus and both of these are helpful into the two things the first is survival of an species now survival of an species it means that for the survival an individual needs to procure the food individual need to procure the food plus for the continuation of the species he needs the sexual behavior now these two things are occur with the combination of limbic system and hypothalamus so the major connections of hypothalamus are seen with the limbic system apart from the limbic system which is necessary for the continuity of an species and survival of an individual we are having the another connections with brain stem also and we are having the connection with the connection with the spinal cord we have the connection with the thalamus so these are the basic connections of your hypothalamus so now we'll discuss the all neural connections one by one now whenever we are talking about the neural connections these neural connections are generally reciprocal that means these are the bidirectional connection what does it means that hypothalamus is connected with limbic system in the same way the limbic system will project to the hypothalamus hypothalamus connected to the brain stem and brain stem will project to the hypothalamus hypothalamus connected to the olfactory region and olfactory region project to the hypothalamus hypothalamus project to the thalamus and thalamus also project to hypothalamus hypothalamus having all the bidirectional connections so that is the important part which you have to keep in mind now we will discuss some important named fibers 
which are helpful in the connection of hypothalamus with the surrounding part of the brain. So when you will see the list of the fibers, those are connecting the hypothalamus to the different part. The first name comes is medial forebrain bundle. Medial forebrain bundle. Now what is medial forebrain bundle? Now as the name suggests, it looks like that it is remain to the forebrain only but it is not like that it is a very vast axonal pathway or you can say that it is a neural pathway which is present in the brain and it connects basically hypothalamus it connects basically hypothalamus to the brain stem it will go till the brain stem and in between that it also receives the connections from the limbic system it also receives the connections from limbic system and it also receives the connection from olfactory area now when you will see in the brain stem where it will relay this medial forebrain bundle basically will go and make a connection with the reticular formation there and it relay into the periaqueductal areas now what is the meaning of peri aqueductal area now when you will see the brain stem in the brain stem you have the centrally located duct now this duct is known as aqueduct it is known as aqueduct now this aqueduct surrounded by the gray matter collection where we have the neurons where you will have the neurons and this brain uh, medial forebrain bundle will relay into these areas where you will have the neurons or the collections which are known as nuclei and these nuclei are concerned with the reticular formation and also we have the periaqueductal nuclei which are concerned with the autonomic nervous system which are concerned with autonomic nervous system now when you will see the brain stem we have three seven nine and ten these are the four cranial nerves those are contribute into the autonomic nervous system third oculomotor facial glossopharyngeal and vagus nerve now these cranial nerves are having parasympathetic nuclei these cranial nerves are having parasympathetic nuclei now this medial forebrain bundle basically helpful in the affection of hypothalamus or the modulation of parasympathetic outflow from these nerves by hypothalamus so this is the medial forebrain bundle plus as i told you that this medial forebrain bundle is also having a connection from the olfactory area so what is this helpful is that because of olfactory connection it is helpful an individual to respond for the olfaction stimuli so there is a behavioral behavior change in the behavior for an olfactory input so this is possible because this olfactory area also passing through this medial forebrain bundle now you have to remember that these are the fibers which are bidirectional so brain stem is also projecting to the hypothalamus through this medial forebrain bundle 
So this medial forebrain bundle is having afferent as well as efferents. That means it is having both variety of the fibers input as well as output to the hypothalamus. And when you will see the hypothalamus, in which part of the hypothalamus, so the most commonly it connects the lateral zone of the hypothalamus to all these areas. It basically connects the lateral zone of the hypothalamus to the brain stem, olfactory areas and limbic system. So these are the three connections of hypothalamus with the help of medial forebrain bundle which is having the afferents as well as efferents and it is helpful in the behavior changes for the olfactory inputs and also it is helpful in the modulation of autonomic outflow from the third seven nine and tenth cranial nerve so that is the medial forebrain bundle then you have the second name in the connections of hypothalamus is known as connections with the amygdala connections with the amygdala now this connection is known as stria terminalis stria terminalis now when you will see this stria terminalis this stria terminalis arises from a small area is known as amygdala now this amygdala give rise to the stria terminalis fibers now these are the curved fibers these are the curved fibers those are running along with the tail of caudate nucleus if you will see the structure of the caudate nucleus now this structure is the caudate nucleus now this is the structure of the caudate nucleus this is the tail of the caudate nucleus body and head of the caudate nucleus now this is the stria terminalis which is running along with the tail and it is a curved structure and this stria terminalis will go and connect the pre-optic area of hypothalamus pre-optic area of hypothalamus so when we will see the stria terminalis it arises from amygdala and it basically relay into the pre-optic area of hypothalamus so stria terminalis is a curved fibers and they also convey the olfactory responses they also convey the olfactory responses to the hypothalamus so that is what is about the stria terminalis so when we will read the connections of hypothalamus with amygdala you have to remember the connection is known as stria terminalis which is actually the component of limbic system and it is a curved fiber and that arises from the amygdala curve and will relay into the pre-optic area and it is responsible for the olfactory connections to the hypothalamus then we'll have the third connection and that is known as mammillary peduncle the third connection named connection is known as mammillary peduncle now this mammillary peduncle is again a connection of hypothalamus as the name suggesting mammillary body and the connection is with the brain stem now in the brain stem when you see the midbrain we have the part is known as tagmentum tagmentum now this mammillary body is having a bidirectional connection with the tagmentum part of the midbrain now in this tagmentum we have the nuclei 
which are known as tegmental nuclei. So mammillary peduncle is a connection of mammillary body of the hypothalamus with the tegmental nuclei of brain stem, particularly the midbrain and it is again a bi-directional connection. Now we will have the another connection is known as dorsal longitudinal fasciculus. The another name is dorsal longitudinal fasciculus. Now as the name fasciculus means it is a bundle of white fibers. It is a bundle of white fibers and this longitudinal dorsal longitudinal fasciculus is a connection of hypothalamus it is a connection of hypothalamus with the reticular system with the reticular system and this dorsal longitudinal fasciculus supposed to modulate autonomic nervous system action this dorsal longitudinal fasciculus is helpful to modulate the autonomic nervous system actions. One more connection is known as fornix. Now this fornix is arising from the hippocampus. Now this hippocampus present into the parahippocampal gyrus which is area seen into the inferior part of the brain. It is a gyrus which is present on the inferior surface of the brain and this hippocampus project by the fornix to the mammillary body. It will project to the mammillary body but it also project to pre-optic area and arcuate nucleus arcuate nucleus so this is the connection of hippocampus to the mammillary body and we see that mammillary body further project to the thalamus that is known as mammillothalamic fibers so this is the hypothalamus this mammillary body is the part of hypothalamus which is receiving the formix and it will further project by the help of mammillothalamic fibers. Then there is a one more fiber is known as connection of retina to the hypothalamus. Retinohypothalamic fibers. Now these fibers are coming from the retina by the optic tract and optic chiasma and they will relay into the supra chiasmatic nuclei of hypothalamus which is present in the supra optic area and this connection gives the sense of day time and the night time to the hypothalamus and with the help of this supra chiasmatic it helpful into the biological clock control as well as the sexual behavior of an individual in respect of day or night time. So that is what is about the input to the hypothalamus. Now when you will see output fibers, now when you will see the fibers those are projecting to the different areas from the hypothalamus, I told you that most of the fibers are bidirectional. But there is a one more group of fiber is known as mammillary princeps fasciculus. Now this mammillary princeps fasciculus is having the two part. One is known as mammillothalamic fibers and second is known as mammillo tegmental fibers. Now when you will see the mammillothalamic fibers, if you remember that this mammillothalamic fibers 
or the part of papage circuits it is a part of papage circuit so what will happen that the fibers those are arising from the mammillary body will go and relay into the thalamus will go and relay into the thalamus and this is known as mammillothalamic fibers while the fibers which are arising from the mammillary body will go and relay into the tegmentum now again it is a area where you will have the midbrain nuclei and this is a component of four brain bundles it is a four brain bundle component so they will run along with the four brain bundles so that is what is about mammillary fasciculus which is made up of mammillothalamic fibers and mammillotegmental fibers apart from that there is a bidirectional connections of the hypothalamus with the limbic system with the olfactory area and basically with the tegmentum that means the part of the brain stem so what are the named fibers which we are going to see during the connections of hypothalamus first is the mammillary peduncle first is mammillary peduncle then medial four brain bundle then we will have dorsal longitudinal fasciculus dorsal longitudinal fasciculus then stria terminalis stria terminalis then fornix fornix then you have connection with the retina retino hypothalamic fiber apart from that we have mammillary princeps fasciculus mammillary princeps fasciculus which is having the two part mammillothalamic and mammillotegmental so these are the important neuronal connection of hypothalamus with the limbic system olfactory area and the brain stem now there is a one more important connection of the hypothalamus and that is with the pituitary gland now as you all know that pituitary gland is having the two lobes anterior and posterior lobe anterior lobe of the pituitary is known as adeno hypophysis because the anterior lobe is having the secretory cells while the posterior lobe is having only the storage of hormones it does not secrete any hormone and anterior lobe is having the secretory cells and it will release the hormone now both these two parts of the pituitary gland are under the uh, control of hypothalamus now for this control of anterior pituitary you have a neuronal connection from the tubular region and that is known as tubero infundibular tract now this tubero infundibular tract is actually having the factors those are releasing from the arcuate nuclei arcuate nuclei releases the releasing factor as well as release inhibiting factor arcuate nuclei present in the tubural area of hypothalamus and that will having the releasing factor and release inhibiting factor now these factors are present into the cytoplasm of the neurons which are present 
into the arcuate nuclei. Now they will reach to the median eminence. These will reach to the median eminence and in the median eminence we have a capillary tuft. Now what will happen actually? Now there is the arcuate nuclei. Now arcuate nuclei present into the tubural region. Now tubural region is the middle portion of hypothalamus. Now from the arcuate nuclei you have tubro infundibular tract. Tubro infundibular tract. Now whatever the releasing factors or release inhibiting factors comes from this nuclei will reach to the median eminence. Median eminence. Now here you have the connection of the base of infundibular stalk. Now here you have a tuft of capillary. Here we have tuft of capillary and these neuronal endings will release these factors into this blood. Now from the base of the infundibular stalk, this tuft of capillary is connected by another set of the sinusoids. Another set of the sinusoids which are present into the posterior, into the anterior lobe. Which are present into the anterior lobe. And this connection is known as hypophyseal portal system. It is known as hypophyseal portal system. What is this portal system means? A vessel which is connecting the two sets of capillary. A system which is connecting the two sets of the capillary. So what will happen here, that anterior lobe is under the control of hypothalamus by the vascular system. But the releasing factors or inhibiting, release inhibiting factors, those are coming from the arcuate nucleus, reaching to the median eminence, that is the site where you will have the first set of the capillaries. And this is actually formed by the superior hypophyseal artery. Then this capillary network is connected by the sinusoidal network with a portal uh, system. This portal system will pass through the infundibulum and it will reach to the sinusoid. And these sinusoids then will relay these releasing factors to the secretory cells of anterior pituitary gland. So that is how the anterior pituitary gland is controlled by the hypothalamus. Now when you will see the control of the posterior lobe, as I told you that posterior lobe does not have any kind of the secretory cell, it is just the site of the storage and that is known as hypothalamo, hypothalamo, hypophyseal tract. It is known as hypothalamo, hypophyseal tract. Now as we know that we have the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei. Now these supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei releases the two hormones, those are known as oxytocin and antidiuretic hormones. These hormones will reach to the posterior pituitary. These hormones will reach to the posterior pituitary by the nerve fiber itself. And these nerve fibers is having the long axons. These neurons are having the long axons and these neurons are present here and they are having the long axons. These axons are known as hypothalamo hypophyseal tract and their end will go and make the dilatations and these dilatations 
are known as herring bodies. These dilatations are known as herring bodies. So what will happen here that the neurons which are present into the supraoptic and paraventricular nuclei having the long axons and these long axons are known as hypothalamo hypophysial tract and in the cytoplasm of this axon you have the hormones in the form of colloid material and this hormone is carried by a carrier protein is known as neurophysin neurophysin so the hormone will reach to the terminals in the posterior lobe and these terminals are known as herring bodies and the transport protein or carrier protein is known as neurophysin and whenever the stimulation will come there is a process is known as exocytosis and with the help of the exocytosis this hormones will relay into the posterior lobe and then it will enter into the vascular system or the circulatory system so that is what is about the role of hypothalamus in control of pituitary gland now we will discuss about the functions of hypothalamus functions of hypothalamus so now we'll talk about the functions of hypothalamus so these are the main functions of the hypothalamus that it is having the autonomic nervous system control temperature regulation control of the pituitary gland food and water intake sexual behavior emotional behavior and control of our biological clock or the circadian rhythm now how the hypothalamus do the modulation in the autonomic outflow now when you will see the hypothalamus you have the anterior part of the hypothalamus and posterior part of the hypothalamus now this anterior part of hypothalamus affects the parasympathetic outflow while the posterior part affects the sympathetic outflow what does it mean that if we we'll do the stimulation of the anterior part of hypothalamus we have the parasympathetic effect like pinpoint pupil decrease heart rate decrease blood pressure increase gut motility micturition defecation all these will happen on the stimulation of anterior part of the hypothalamus when we'll see the posterior part stimulation we have the pupil dilatation we have the decreased secretion loss in the gut motility we have the sympathetic activities like fight fear and frighten responses from the body so these are the effects of autonomic nervous system and to modulate these outflow you have the anterior part of the hypothalamus which controls the parasympathetic and posterior part of the hypothalamus for the sympathetic but the important thing is that these sympathetic outflow is present into the spinal cord from t1 to l2 segment we have the lateral horn of the spinal cord and in that lateral horn of the spinal cord you have these kind of outflow here in the lateral horn now to reach these areas the fibers from the hypothalamus comes out with the help of reticulo spinal tract reticulo spinal tract so this is the important question you have to keep in mind that how the hypothalamus controls these centers of the autonomic nervous system in spinal cord so to control these centers hypothalamus sends the fibers with reticulo spinal fibers and the fibers will reach to their destination not only into the t1 to l2 but also into the s2 s3 s4 segments which are present into the lower part of the spinal cord so this is what is about the first function 
regulation of autonomic outflow by hypothalamus then you will have the second function is temperature regulation now when you will see the regulation of the temperature again the anterior hypothalamus and posterior hypothalamus now anterior part of the hypothalamus is causes loss of the heat anterior part of the hypothalamus causes loss of the heat and for the loss you have vasodilatation we have the vasodilatation into the cutaneous vessels and sweating and sweating now if there is a damage in the anterior nucleus anterior part of the hypothalamus the person will have hyperthermia person will have hyperthermia then you have the posterior part of the hypothalamus now this posterior part of the hypothalamus conserves the heat and as well as it produces the heat by the vasoconstriction and shivering and wherever there is a injury into the posterior part of the hypothalamus person will have poikilothermia person is having poikilothermia so with the help of these two anterior and posterior part of the hypothalamus body maintain the normal temperature somewhere around 98 degree fahrenheit so if there is a problem into the anterior and posterior hypothalamus ultimately the temperature of the body is going to affect then we'll have the role of hypothalamus in the control of pituitary gland so that we have already discussed that it is controlled by the hypothalamo hypophyseal portal system for the anterior pituitary and hypothalamo hypophyseal tract for the posterior pituitary then we'll have the control of the food and water intake now when you will see on the control of the food and water intake we have the lateral hypothalamus now this lateral part of the hypothalamus is having the center which stimulate the feeding it stimulate the feeding and it is also known as hunger center it is also known as hunger center that means when we will stimulate the lateral part of the hypothalamus person will start eating but if there is a injury if there is a lesion into this lateral part person will have starvation the individual have the starvation along with that this lateral part of the hypothalamus also having the thirst center it is also having the thirst center so this lateral part of the hypothalamus is having two function one it's having the hunger center which stimulates the feeding and second it is having the thirst center then you will have the ventromedial nucleus now this part of the hypothalamus is having the center for satiety or fullness center for satiety or fullness so this is what is about the control of hypothalamus with for the food and water intake then you will have the control on the sexual behavior and emotional behavior of an individual now for this sexual behavior we have the preoptic nuclei now that preoptic nuclei is having the gnrh release gonadotropin releasing hormone gnrh now this gnrh comes from the preoptic region and also it is having the connection with the limbic system now these two important connections first is the release of gonadotropin releasing hormone and second is the connection of hypothalamus with the limbic system is a important part in controlling of the sexual view behavior of an individual and the most important is that the person is become oriented to the time place and person about his 
sexual behavior. If there is an injury in these areas, he will have in the abnormal sexual behavior. Now we'll have the emotional behavior. Now emotional behavior is having the two parts. First is the feeling. Now feeling can be from the depression to the euphoria and second is expression of that feeling in the term of physical output and that physical response can be in term of flushing, can be in term of the pilo erection, it can be in the form of palpitation and all these are uh, seen because of the dorsomedial nucleus of hypothalamus. Now this dorsomedial nucleus of hypothalamus is also having the projection to the autonomic nervous system and that is helpful to show the physical response to the feeling of your emotional behavior. Then you will have the circadian rhythm. Now this circadian rhythm is also known as master clock and that is controlled by the suprachiasmatic nucleus. And this suprachiasmatic nucleus is known as master clock because it having the connection with the optic chiasma and it sends the day and night time. And this sense of the day time and the night time is helpful in the orientation to time, place, person and this orientation for the day and light is ultimately affecting your emotional and sexual behavior. So ultimately there should be a coordination of all the hypothalamic nuclei as well as their connection with the reticular system, with the different part of the brain stem and with the limbic system is responsible for the maintenance of your homeostasis and survival of an individual and continuation of an species. So this is all about hypothalamus. Thank you.